When taking in and sending out lots of different reptiles, there's no doubt going to be interesting people and interesting cases that come up. People do very occasionally send animals back. In the past year, two people have sent back ball pythons. One experience was interesting, and the second experience was even more interesting. We're starting today with the interesting one. It's the most recent ball python that's been sent back. I want to do a handful of videos like this, so let me know if you enjoy this one and if you want me to do more. But keep in mind, if you are the person that I'm talking about, or if you are simply watching this video, this is not meant to attack the person or be mean to them. This is either for educational purposes or literally for entertainment purposes if it's interesting. Because we can definitely learn off of these cases and also be entertained by them. There's no line about that. So there was a ball python, I think it was a butter or something that came in as a pretty common morph that we get. It was doing just fine at first. Uh, it was with us for a few months, eating, growing, all good and ready to find a new home. Uh, I randomly name animals different things if I don't know what its previous name was. This one of course was named Paperclip. I don't know, it was the first noun I thought of. So this was Paperclip and it sold in October of 2020. Like anyone that wants to get an animal from me, they have to get verified when it comes to husbandry. I ask what their temperatures are, humidity, how they're doing that, if it's with a heat mat or over tank heater, um, if they're using a thermostat, just all the basic stuff, their diet, pictures of the enclosure, all the stuff that helps us see if this person is prepared. And this person was physically definitely prepared. The enclosure looked good and everything checked out. I was perfectly fine sending an animal. Once the weather was fine, I shipped it off and all was good. I didn't hear back, which is perfectly normal. Most people don't really update if nothing goes wrong. Some people do like to send us pictures for fun, but it's not expected and most people don't. But a few months later, I received an email uh, that included this part where they said, he spends a lot of time in a striking S stance, staring at me through his enclosure. He stops this behavior when I leave, but as soon as he notices I've returned, he starts up again. Every night he circles his enclosure, bumping his nose onto all of the outside walls and the ceiling trying to escape. This behavior does not stop when the lights turn off, though I have not watched him overnight, so I've only seen it happen maybe four hours. Whenever he's handled, he does his best to get out of my hands and hisses every time I pick him up. I'm concerned that he's stressed out. So yeah, all of these signs do point to stress. It's totally normal for an animal to really move around a lot the first couple days or even weeks in a new enclosure, but if it is happening for multiple months, there's definitely something wrong somewhere. It could be something in the enclosure, something in the room, or something wrong with the animal. This ball python was totally fine before, wasn't striking or anything. A lot of people just don't really know how to handle them, but ball pythons are pretty easy to get going with, but I responded to get some more details, make sure the husbandry is the same and see if I missed anything previously, and I also asked for pictures of the enclosure and the snake. I got some. The very first thing that I noticed is the enclosure was super dry. It was coconut fiber, which is fine, but normally people spray it or add water or something. It looked like it could easily be like 0% humidity in this enclosure, which isn't too great for a ball python that normally I like to keep around 60 to 70% humidity. Also, he was in an S position, which a lot of people consider the striking position, but he was just sitting under the hide. It wasn't actually a defensive position. So in this picture, at least he was not in a defensive pose. He was just sitting there. They also followed up and said that the fogger for the enclosure had broken. Previously, I didn't actually know that a fogger was being used. It wasn't mentioned and I don't really recommend using foggers. I've used them in the past. Actually, you can see them in really old videos. It does add humidity, but it's so much moisture straight into the air that it's actually pretty uncomfortable. I've put it up to myself to see how hard it is to breathe and it feels like vaping, basically. Like it's the, kind of the equivalent of a vape pen, but just with moisture and like no flavor. <laughs> And so you can imagine for a ball python, it was probably not super comfortable. It can easily make things too humid. And like they said, this one broke, which is surprisingly common. And so the enclosure dried out. And they said that because of this, they think that there's something wrong with the snake. Its nose is bubbling. It's got extra mucus in its mouth, and it seems to be having trouble breathing. All these things point to a respiratory infection. Not super rare, not super dangerous most of the time, unless it's been a constant problem and it did not have an RI before I sent it. So I explained how you can help with the respiratory infection. Oftentimes you can just kind of deal with it yourself, but if you're not comfortable with this or if it's getting pretty bad, you can go to a vet. I'm not one to say instantly go to a vet anytime anything is wrong, because most of the time with pretty much every common animal reptile snake problem, you can do a lot of it yourself. However, vets can be useful with respiratory infections. I did say, however, 
every vet pretty much is gonna say, do blood work. Every time I've gone to any vet for any reptile, they always say, you should definitely get blood work. Of course, blood work is one of the most expensive things that they offer, and it's almost always unnecessary when you're going for something that can't possibly be related to something showing up in the blood, including a respiratory infection. So I basically said, you can go tell them it probably has an RI, pay for an exam, and the medication needed, and that's it. Uh, and I actually didn't hear anything back, again, most likely because they figured it out or it started clearing up on its own because they fixed the husbandry. But two months later, I got an intake order, which means that somebody is interested in sending me an animal. This is common, happens every day, orders are always coming in, but I did recognize the name and it turns out it was uh, this person that got the ball python. They did go to the vet and they got ceftazidine or tazacef. It's oftentimes used for our eyes and it doesn't always work. I've used it with some animals where it instantly helped and others where it really didn't do anything and actually did more harm than good, but I don't think there's anything wrong with using a controlled amount of ceftazidine for respiratory infection in a reptile, but it just did not work. So there is a pretty long line for intake kits. Luckily, I will be taking them in very shortly because I'm moving soon, but even if the line was going to stay long for a while, I do want to prioritize people like this because I feel like part of the promise to the person sending us an animal involves throughout, not just sending it out to a new person, but making sure that we help the new owners. And if they truly can't do anything, we give them priority when taking them back. We can't do it for free. I don't have enough money to play around to simply for free take in any return or anything. But thankfully this person was actually, they did ex everything that I think they should to send an animal back. They got an intake kit, they were ready to wait in line, but I went ahead and put this person as a priority because this was an animal that we had actually sent them. And about three weeks later, we were able to set everything up and it came in to us. But actually the day of shipping, right before they sent it to FedEx, they said that they discovered a burn mark on the snake. They were very surprised, very caught off guard, and have no idea where it came from and that the thermostat must have broke or something. The thermostat was actually purchased from me because I sell used supplies. So I know that at least when I sold it, it was working just fine. Things of course do break, the thermostat I did send, I've never had one of those break, but anything's possible, of course. So I figured maybe it was just a small burn, maybe the thermostat just broke and they didn't really notice because before they sent the animal to us, I had them send updated images. And in this image, it looked perfectly fine, no burns or anything. And I could see the full belly where they said the burn was. So I figured it was either really small, really unnoticeable, or it had just happened and it's a fresh, small injury. Either way, I got the snake here and I unboxed it. And the moment I pulled it out of the bag, I first noticed there's stuck shed on the snake, which makes sense with low humidity. And then we've got this this big boy on the tummy and a big old burn. It is indeed a burn. Compared to the size of the animal, this is the largest burn I've seen because I have seen bigger burns on like bigger animals, but the amount of space that this burn takes up on the ball python is the largest burn that I've actually worked with. Yeah, it's it's pretty rough. It, I'm sure it did not feel good when it was burning. I'm, I'm not really sure how they went by without noticing, but my guess is because they were scared to handle the snake, they never really picked it up and examined it. They probably just fed it in the enclosure and let that be it. And they just never noticed that the heating malfunctioned at some point. Now we've got it. I'm not handling it in this video because I don't want to rub its stomach all over me and possibly cause an infection because the wound isn't really open, but it's still going to be super tender and I don't want any bacteria around there. So for now, it's just chilling on paper towel. But of course, I got a bunch of clips of it on a clean surface to show you uh, in this video. So yeah, now it's got a a respiratory infection, a big old burn on the belly, and it also has stuck shed. Stuck shed is not the priority right now. I, I don't want shed to build up, but I also want to focus on the burn and not mess with it too much. And the problem is we have to do the respiratory infection at the same time, because it does have an RI, definitely not the worst I've seen, but it's pretty decently infected in the respiratory system that it is priority enough where I can't put that off till the burn is dealt with. So I'm gonna have to keep this thing clean, make sure it's in the right setup, make sure it's not too hot, and make sure the burn doesn't get worse. And I'll be honest, I've never dealt with a ball python that has stuck shed, a respiratory infection, and a burn all at the same time. But I'm not crazy concerned. I don't expect it to die. And it's sad to see that this happened. Not every experience is gonna be perfect. And like I said, the customers seem perfectly fine. Super excited, super, um, um, I don't know. They just seem like a pretty normal person. I, re I really had no red flags. Sometimes there will be a little red flag where it's like, maybe we shouldn't send, but then it all turns out to be fine. But in this case, it was all green flags and uh, it's still, we just didn't have a great experience in the end. So the ball python has no problems being handled. Doesn't seem to be stressed at all. Even in the tub it's hanging out in, seems to be perfectly fine. But 
that is the most recent experience of an animal being sent back. This is, I guess, part one of this ball pythons experience. Not the best time because I have so much else going on right now. I thought this was just gonna be a quick send back. Oh, maybe a little uh, DIY treatment on the RI and then ready to go back out in a few months, but it'll take a little bit more than that. Uh, the person was very friendly. I am definitely convinced that they cared. They just didn't necessarily do everything right and had a lot of problems come up. There was no context on this little strawberry hat, but now I have the ball python's hat. I guess I can send it back out with the ball python to the next owner, but that's that. What do we have to learn from this? How would I know in the future maybe not to send to this person? Honestly, I don't know. I still can't pick up any red flags. Um, you might be wondering like when they didn't answer for two months, like when I emailed them and they didn't respond, I even myself I was like, why did I never follow up? But this was just during the time where there were so many emails going in. I just never would have remembered the specific case because so many people send questions. So I guess the biggest thing that I could do different, like have a different email folder for people that have already purchased and maybe check through and see if anyone's followed up. Because basically once I answer an email, it gets archived until we need it again. I don't actively see it. So I need like a, a reminder or something to, oh, maybe if there's been a week and they haven't responded to a health concern or an animal they bought, maybe email again and say, hey, how are things going? And can you send some pictures? Because it's never going to be perfect, but that could be a little improvement there. Uh, the others, however, the last resend was much worse. The title will probably be something about how the ball python was dropped in a Walgreens drop box, which is in fact true. And if you enjoyed this one, I can do that one soon. So in addition to that, I've got a few others that involve lawsuit threats and the police calling threats, so it should be fun, but that's it for this one. If you want to rehome your animal or purchase an animal, you can check on our mold scales. In the next few months, it'll really start filling back up and be chugging along at full force. You can also check the description for products I do recommend that most likely will not stop working, uh, not including foggers. Yeah, that's it. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.